So in this video we're going to see about the worker processes of Nginx, what they are and what responsibilities they have in an Nginx environment. So if you want to learn more about this, stick with me. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to the next video in the Nginx video series in which I've tried to explain about all the concepts and all the options that Nginx gives in its open source version so if you want to learn more about the other features of Nginx I've got the video series link down below so don't forget to check it. So in this video we're going to have a look to the worker processes in Nginx, how to configure them based on our infrastructure that the Nginx instance will be running on. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So right before we jump into the configurations and stuff like that, let's first have an explanation about what Nginx really does in the lower levels. So then we'll move to the configurations and we'll actually spin up an Nginx instance in Docker environment with our custom configurations about worker processes. So over here, as you can see, as always, we've got some clients, which are actually the people that are using our services. So in between, right over here, we've got an API gateway concept, which Nginx will stand over here. So basically, Nginx will be the gateway to all the requests and actually deciding on the information that is sent with those requests. Nginx will try to then route the request to the relevant backend services getting the responses from that and then proxying it back to the clients that has made the requests initially. So now that we know what Nginx does in an overview, over here I've got another picture demonstrating the different components of Nginx. So basically when we spin up an Nginx instance, a master process will be created, which has the responsibility to create the child processes. So basically these child processes will have three types, which can be of type cache manager or cache loader and the worker processes itself. So basically the cache manager and cache loader are the processes that handles the caching in Nginx level. So basically when we configure Nginx to cache our responses, when the worker processes get the responses from the backend services, the cache loader will actually store the response based on our configuration. And next time the client would make a request to exactly the same resource. The worker process will return the response from the cache itself and don't actually make another request to the backend services. And over here, the cache manager is actually the child process that will handle the deletion of these caches, again, based on the configurations that we give to Nginx. So lastly, the worker child processes over here are actually the processes that actually handle the received requests from the clients, proxying it to the backend services or actually serving static files and things like that and sending the prepared responses back to the clients. So by doing this, Nginx will have multiple processes that handle the requests. So as a result, Nginx will be able to handle more simultaneous requests. So of course there are some points and best practices to keep in mind when configuring the number of the worker processes which we're going to see shortly in this video. So the last point to keep in mind is that the worker processes use shared memories to store and access the data for cache, the session logs and rate limit information. So of course if you want to learn about all these concepts in Nginx like caching and rate limiting and stuff like that. I've got all the relevant videos in my video series for which you'll find the link in the description section down below. So next moving to the official documentations on the Nginx website. Over here we've got the relevant documentation about worker processes and the available configurations and things like that. So if I move to VS Code over here you can see that in the workers directory 
in the Nginx directory, in my GitHub repository, where I've got all the relevant files and configurations and stuff like that, for which you can find the repository link down below so you can move along and access the files and configurations. So over here you can see that I've got an nginx.conf file, a docker compose file and an index.html file which is a very basic html file that will configure nginx to serve this. And over here in the docker compose file I've got only one service that is nginx that is using the 1-21 alpine official image and over here in the volume section I've got the .slash nginx.com file mapped to the etc nginx nginx.com file inside the container which is actually the configuration file that will try to configure the worker processes configuration which we'll see in a moment. The next volume is the .slash front directory mapped to slash var ww front inside the container. Again we'll configure nginx to serve the files in this directory inside the container and over here in the port section I've got only one port that is mapped to exactly same port inside the container. Again this is the port that will configure nginx to start listening on. So lastly in the nginx.com file you can see that I've got an HTTP block, some configurations that is related to worker processes, which we'll see the description in the official documentations shortly. And over here in the server block, the listen port is the exact same port that is mapped outside the container. The client max body size is set to 64 megabytes, which is the maximum size of the client's requests body. And over here I've got only one location block which is using the root directive that is pointing to the exact same location that I mapped the front HTML files inside the container. And next I've got an add header by which I'm trying to allow star for the course policies. Again if you want to deep dive in the course configurations in Nginx I'll leave the relevant link down below. So next I've got the try files which is the directive to configure nginx to try to serve the requested files and by using the index directive I am defining the file to be used if the client made a request to a path. So basically if the client makes a request to the root path and actually does not define anything after that like index.html nginx will actually first look for the index.html file in this given directory over here if it finds it will serve it if not it'll look for the next file which is index.htm in the exact same directory and again if it doesn't find that file it'll actually respond with 404 which is the error for the resource not found so now that we have our basic configuration and necessary files to spin up an nginx instance. Let's move to the official documentations and actually gain some information about the worker processes configurations. So the first configuration is the worker AIO requests with the type of number which is actually the maximum number of outstanding asynchronous AIO operations for a single worker process. Next we've got the worker connections Again, it is a number which actually sets the maximum number of simultaneous connections that can be opened by a single worker process. So just keep in mind that setting this to a higher value with lower resources won't actually increase the performance, but actually it may cause some performance issues. And again, setting this to lower values won't actually let Nginx to use up all the resources that is available for it. So next we've got the worker processes which is again a number and by default it is set to auto by which we can actually define the number of worker processes. Again the same rule applies as the worker connections in which if we set it to lower values Nginx won't be able to use the available resources and by setting it to a higher value we might actually have some performance issues. So basically it is best recommended to set it to the available number of CPU cores that we have in our machine that we're running Nginx on. 
and next we've got the worker R limit in O file which is again of type number and it actually changes the limit of the maximum number of open files for the worker process so basically this is used to increase the limit without restarting the main process and as the next and the last configuration we've got the worker shutdown timeout which configures a timeout for a graceful shutdown of worker processes so basically by setting this and when the time expires nginx will try to close all the connections currently open so the point that you should keep in mind is the context over here which is defined on each configuration so basically if i go to the configuration file the main context will be inside the http block and the events context will be inside the events block that we define over here so like for example over here the context for the worker connections is inside the events block so basically this is how we configure the worker process configurations inside the nginx configuration file well that was a lot of configurations that i used so in order to test this i'll move to the terminal i'll hit ls to make sure i'm in the exact same directory that i've got my files so by only saying docker compose op dash d to run in the detached mode so as a result we'll see that docker compose will create a network and the container attaching to that created network so by saying docker compose ps we see that something is wrong with the configurations so if i say docker compose logs dash f to follow and dash dash tail 100 to grab the last 100 lines so basically by looking in the logs that is complaining about the worker processes directive is not allowed here so basically in the nginx configuration i just moved the worker processes and worker r limit in your file above the http block so basically the main context will be actually one level above http block so actually after changing the locations for these configurations and restarting the container nginx container starts correctly and it's actually ready to accept connections so basically if i go to the local host port 9999 i should be able to receive the response for the exact same html file that is served by nginx so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one again don't forget to watch other videos in this nginx video series where you can find about all available configurations things like ip restrictions rate limiting caching and cool stuff like that so if you have any questions any recommendations you can ask me in the comment section down below and if you like the content please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to help grow the channel and support me to create more free contents like this so with that i hope to see you in the next videos